It's been over three years since the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 people died that day. It has joined the list of mass shootings that hasn't stopped. And now, of course, Boulder has been added to that increasing list right after Atlanta a few days before. Our next guest tonight, Sam Zeif, survived the Parkland shooting and days later had this to say to the former president at the White House. I was reading today that a person 20 years old walked into a store and bought an AR-15 in five minutes with an expired ID. How is it that easy to buy this type of weapon? How do we not stop this after Columbine, after Sandy Hook? I'm sitting with a mother that lost her son. It's still happening. With us again tonight is Sam Zeif. He's a college student now. When we first met Sam, he was in his final year at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. His close friend, Joaquin, one of the 17 that was killed in that shooting. Uh, hey, buddy, it's great to see you. It's been too long. I think about you often. And to be totally candid, one of our producers said in the break, wait till you see Sam. He's all grown up. And indeed, uh, you are. And I'm glad to see it. Um, that day you met with Donald Trump. He famously had a card in his hand uh, that uh, with a handwritten note from one of his aides, I hear you. Uh, of course, there was no evidence that he heard what you were saying. You've never received satisfaction or a satisfactory answer, have you, for that question you just asked? No, definitely not. Definitely not. No, he, that was a complete publicity stunt for him. He just wanted to hear something from victims before <clears throat> <clears throat> that night in Tallahassee where my classmates smoked or spoke, he just wanted to, he just wanted to be there first and hear from victims. That's, there was really no, he had no intention of moving anywhere with gun, with gun control after that or before that. You know what this day was like in Boulder. This is the day the flowers start arriving. This is the night the casseroles start arriving at the front door. <laughs> What could you possibly uh, tell the folks there, maybe even help the folks there about the road that is ahead of them? Um, honestly, there's nothing really that can make it better. It's, it's the worst feeling in the world. And it's something that you have to live with for your beloved victims that fell in your, in your city, in your town. And, um, it never really gets, it never really gets easier to kind of live with. You kind of, you just get stronger and you learn how to carry it. And, um, yeah, I'm sending, sending, sending you all my strength. You've clearly learned how to carry it. You're in college now. Tell us about your recovery, the ongoing process of recovery from that day and how your life's going now? Um, life, life is well for the most part. You know, I'm lucky, I'm happy, and my family's healthy. Um, like I said, you know, it's, it's just something I've kind of had to live with and, you know, just live the best life I can for the people that can't anymore, for my friends and for my, my teachers and classmates. And, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's three years, like you said, you know, it's already three years ago, still happening. It's terrible. Let me end with, uh, asking you for a prediction. Do you think any major change will come to this business of guns and their availability and their lethality <laughs> in your adult lifetime? I mean, it's really all in the hands of the policymakers. Um, I understand, you know, President Trump had no, uh, former President Trump had no intentions of ridding our country of this violence. You know, it's, it's, he had his pockets being filled, you know, hopefully uh, Biden will be different. You know, he says he's working towards it, but, you know, it's, it's just getting worse and worse. You know, we thought 2018 was, was such a bad year, 2019. We had, there's 300, ish shootings in 2018 and 2020 have to cut more than 
the entire country is on lockdown and there were 600 mass shootings. It's, and it's, I understand, you know, you, you just came into office and you have a lot on your plate. There's a global pandemic and whatnot, but this is not a global issue. This is an American issue. It's money driven. And like, when it, exactly it, will it be in my lifetime? I hope so. But currently I'm planning on raising my kids somewhere else. And it's terrible. It's a terrible feeling to to feel because I do love my country. I love everything about it. It's great that we have freedom. People think we're trying to take away their guns. We're not. We're just trying to make sure that only the right people have access to that kind of power. And way too many people have that access right now. Um, it's, it's, I don't even know. It's, it's, it's our own pandemic. It's, a, it's an American pandemic that kills people every year. And, you know, it's, I, I, I forgot who was on your show just now, just got off. I don't remember his name. He seemed to have worked in the White House and he said that this is an emerging crisis. No, it's not. This is not an emerging crisis. I sat next to a mother who lost her son years ago, six-year-olds. I mean, they didn't care when six-year-olds die. Why would they care when my 18-year-old friend died? You know, 17 years old. But I don't know, I don't know what well. it's going to take. I don't know what it's going to take. It's going to take it's going to take our, our president to step up and, and get behind this and really, really devote his energy to it like it deserves, because our country is dying in a lot of ways. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.